I think most Albertans would agree that we see ourselves as a bit unique in the Confederation of Canada. One thing that has set us apart in the past has been our oil and gas resources and the battle with the federal government over those resources. Well, this week has been another interesting one, and in spite of all the politics, Albertans keep moving forward. Joining me today to talk about Alberta and our business and politics is editor for the Western Standard, Dave Naylor. Dave, thanks so much for joining us here once again today. Oh, my pleasure, Jeanette, anytime. Great. So, Dave, this past Wednesday was the deadline for all votes needing to be in for the members of the UCP party to have their say on the leadership of Jason Kenney. So we're now less than a week away from the results of that leadership review being announced. This topic's obviously dominated the conversations of many Albertans. So do you think Jason Kenney really deserved a leadership review? Well, I mean, uh, if you look at his performance, he's rated the, the worst premier in the country, uh, mainly due to his uh, COVID, uh, COVID vaccine response and, and bringing in COVID passports and, and shutting businesses down. Uh, so if you're just judging by the polls, Jeanette, uh, no, he should have uh, resigned a long time ago, but uh, he's chosen to stay on and uh, fight it out. So the voting now done, if your post dark is later than 5 p.m. on Wednesday, you're out of luck now. So uh, for the next week, uh, you, UCP scrutiners are going through each ballot, making sure it's legit, making sure whoever uh, uh, did the voting is a party member. Uh, and then if, once they've confirmed that, uh, they're putting the vote into a uh, super secret box for a Deloitte to count uh, next Wednesday. Uh, of course, as, as Brian Jean points out, it's uh, when Deloitte gets all the uh, uh, all the uh, the ballots, and okay, every, everything's going to be good. The the integrity will be fine, but it's what happens before they get the ballots. And, and it looks like elections, uh, Alberta is investigating some uh, some bulk membership buying that uh, Western Standard reported on a couple of months ago, uh, several credit cards buying uh, several thousand memberships. So, you know, it, it's hard to see. Nobody is going to trust the results. Everybody, no matter which way it is, if Kenny loses, if Kenny wins, uh, the, the, the whole process has been tarnished, in my opinion, and uh, there's not a lot of uh, trust that's going to be out there for the final result. Yeah, I think you're right about that, Dave. And of course, you mentioned Brian Jean. So earlier this week, uh, Mr. Jean was stirring the pot with accusations of that huge multiple membership buys, which you just mentioned. And he attributes this, uh, he attributed obviously this to Jason Kenney's campaign. So Dave, what's the story behind this? Well, as we were, CBC just reported it uh, last week, of course, uh, they could have read it in the Western Standard two months ago, but but we won't go there. It all, it all comes from uh, uh, the last days of the campaign, the last month of, of the campaign, where where bulk memberships were being bought in uh, primar primarily ethnic writings, and they were they were being bought by just a small handful of credit cards, credit card numbers. So you know, thousands of uh, members were allegedly being signed up by by a single credit card. So. Obviously, it, it's concerning. Uh, at the time, we went to the UCP and they said, well, you know what? We're checking every single ballot to make sure that uh, that it was that person who bought it and they're officially a party member and they were charged for it and uh, everything is above board. Uh, you know, but like I said, the, the process has been so flawed and changing it from an in-person vote to a mail-in vote. And it, it, from the beginning to the end, it was another fiasco of organization. So... Uh, that's why I say at the end of the day, uh, uh, nobody's going to uh, nobody's going to really have a good faith in what the, the final result is. Yeah. Is there a record to be set on on what those credit card purchases actually were or is it it's still being investigated? Well, it's still being investigated. We understand that there was uh, uh, memberships actually bought uh, by these credit card numbers. Elections Canada, Elections Alberta, excuse me, is being uh, Elections Alberta. They won't even comment whether they have launched an investigation, uh, but I'm sure they probably have. Uh, and it was, you know, Brian Jean uh, uh, made a formal complaint, but uh, you know, they go back to the 2017 uh, leadership campaign for Jason Kenney and the, the so-called Kamikaze candidate. Uh, 
uh, they still haven't finished that investigation. And that was that was five years ago. So Jason Kenney could win three more mandates and retire an old man before uh, Elections Alberta figures out what went wrong or what went right in, the, in this particular vote. Mm -hmm. So how do you think um, this makes Brian Jean look with all of this coming out? Well, I mean, it's not going to make him look any worse. Uh, he, the day, even well before he was elected, two years ago, he said uh, Kenny should go. And he was a very vocal sideline critic for, for two years. And then obviously ran for the UCP nomination, won that, and then won the, won the by-election and is now a full-fledged uh, member of, of caucus. And he's continued to say, uh, whenever there's a microphone in front of him, that uh, Jason Kenney should go. Uh, and he will run, uh, you know, several other people have, have said they were run, but uh, it, it's very difficult once you've got uh, somebody that's within the caucus working for, for its own demise. So it's going to be an uncomfortable uh, uh, relationship. And I guess that's what is, needs to be answered if, if Kenny does win and does stay on. Uh, you know, MLAs like uh, Brian Jean, like Peter Guthrie, uh, others who have been uh, fairly critical of him, are they going to stay in caucus or are they going to leave and uh, and cross the floor? So, you know, whichever way the, the votes uh, get, the uh, political situation in Alberta is going to going to remain interesting for a long time to come. Yeah, 100 percent. So getting back to Jason Kenney's leadership review. So one thing that, that we noticed here was the, the few people who came out of the word work to express their interest in that leadership position. Obviously, being a premier is a very tough job. But Dave, in, what's, what's your opinion of the initial slate of contenders? Well, really, there's only two. And that's because all the other ones are still in Jason Kenney's uh, uh, cabinet. You know, people like uh, Casey Madu and Doug Schweitzer, they, they would be good uh, candidates for the leadership. But they're not going to say until after the vote. Uh, and if the vote goes Kenney's way, they're not going to say at all. You know, they're going to continue to be uh, to be loyal soldiers. So uh, once next Wednesday come around and uh, uh, and, and Kenny loses, if he loses, you know it'll be a race on Thursday morning to announce who's going to uh, to run. Uh, the two main candidates so far, are Danielle Smith and and Brian Jean, of course. Uh, but if uh, if uh, Kenny does go down, you can expect at least probably three to four. Uh, current cabinet ministers, and maybe even some federal minister or federal uh, MPs. And uh, who knows? Uh, you know, once the leadership race is on, you never know who may run. Okay, so let's move on from this leadership quagmire and focus on Alberta. So, Dave, earlier this week, Alberta's top court used some very strong words to say that the federal government's environmental impact law is unconstitutional. Do you think that this will lead to an ongoing court battle? Well, uh, within moments of uh, the Alberta court striking it down, Jason Kenney said he was taking it to the Supreme Court. Sorry, not Jason Kenney, obviously, uh, uh, Justin Trudeau. Uh, Kenney held a press conference uh, that morning and he was jubilant. He was walking on air. Uh, he, you know, he hasn't had a victory in a long time and, and he felt good uh, with this one. Uh, Trudeau does what Trudeau does and blamed everything on Stephen Harper. Uh, said uh, he was going to uh, take it to the Supreme Court. Uh, and as Trudeau pointed out, the last time Alberta Court of Appeals struck something down as unconstitutional, it was the carbon tax. Uh, that went to the Supreme Court and they ruled the opposite, that it was constitutional. So uh, Kenny, you know, you got to remember that the Supreme Court is stacked with uh, liberal appointees or uh, Stephen Harper appointees, uh, that are, you know, mainly from the, the central part of the country. So uh, I don't know how quickly the Supreme Court can get this on their docket, but uh, I don't see it uh, coming up in the real near future, Jeanette. Mm -hmm. uh, have we seen court battles like this between the feds and Alberta over oil and gas before? Uh, you know, there's been uh, various court battles when, uh, when Alberta threatened to turn off the taps uh, into British Columbia. Uh, that went to court in uh, Alberta. Uh, actually won that one. There's been ongoing battles of uh, the carbon tax at, uh, at various levels of uh, uh, of courts. Uh, you know, so government lawyers, or government lawyers, because they can get rich uh, doing this, right? It goes it goes on for years, and they get uh, 
they get lots of billable hours. But uh, yeah, they're they, they're constantly suing uh, each other, not just on oil and gas, but uh, on a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. In in your opinion, is this is this a move by the Liberal government to just see if they can maybe move that goalpost on the division of powers and charter rights? Uh, maybe. I mean, it's. It's it's different times, right? When when the No More Pipeline bill came in, you know, people were not paying two dollars a, a for a liter of gas. Uh, now the the invasion of uh, the Ukraine by sorry of Ukraine by uh, Russian forces shows how uh, you know how the world's supply can be driven into chaos. So people down east in Montreal and Toronto who are now paying two dollars a liter for to fill up their car. And along with the rising price of inflation, uh, we did a story this week on, you know, people having to take second jobs and postpone retirement and cancel holidays because the cost of living is just is just too much. Uh, so, you know, people in Quebec may be saying, you know, a uh, pipeline kind of sounds good right now because it just cost me $100 to fill up my truck. And, uh, you know, there may be that may drive some political will uh, our way. But uh, you never know. Uh, Trudeau's a stubborn man; doesn't like to admit, uh, doesn't like to apologize for much. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> now, Dave, this past week uh, was designated the Economic Development Week in Alberta. So, part of what Minister Doug Schweitzer talked about this week was the prolonged vacancy rate in downtown Calgary, and I believe the vacancy rate was almost 33 percent. You're in Calgary. What have you been seeing in Calgary? A uh, lot of people back to work now. Uh, the traffic is certainly uh, raised since uh, people stopped working from home. Uh, but I don't see a lot of people moving into downtown. Uh, big companies like uh, Amazon and uh, whatnot, they're, they're, they're investing in Alberta. They're creating, you know, billion dollar centers, but they're not doing it in downtown Calgary. They're doing it in surrounding communities, uh, uh, Rocky View and Foothills and and stuff like that, because they don't want to get stuck paying uh, the ex extravagant uh, taxes uh, that lead them uh, lead them into Calgary. So I will give credit to the UCP. They have done a good job in attracting billions and billions of uh, dollars worth of new in investments the last several months. Uh, it's not doing downtown Calgary any good, I can tell you that. Uh, I think bottom line is people are afraid to come to downtown Calgary because it's, it's getting out of control with... Uh, with junkies and people, uh, uh, open use injection sites and uh, and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's pretty scary. They have uh, with uh, set up a thing called the Core Project, which is looking at uh, trying to reduce that uh, massive number of office vacancies. Uh, Thirty-three percent. They're trying to get it uh, below that. They're changing uh, uh, empty high rises into low cost housing, uh, getting people uh, off the street that way. But no, that's going to create its own problem because uh, wherever there's low cost housing, there seems to be the, the social disorder that uh, that follows. So, uh, so yeah, it's not looking good for downtown Calgary at the moment. But hey, let's uh, let's be bright on the future. We got a uh, hockey team on its way to win the Stanley Cup. We have tens of thousands of fans uh, going back down to the Red Mile on game day. So, Exciting. city's buzzing with that. That's true. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And. and and better news, the Oilers may get eliminated quickly. So, you know, the city will be elated at that uh, when that happens. Oh, so. there you go. And the Stampede is back this summer. Stampede is back. The parade is back. Uh, the You know, hopefully the streets will be full uh, and, you know, uh, get some... Uh, Get some action going on in the bars around the town and uh, and on the grounds. So there you uh, go. Uh, I think everybody's looking forward to having Abs a yeah. having a good party in July. Totally, just in time for summer. Some happy news there. That's fantastic. That's all the time we have for today, Dave. But thank you so much for joining us here once again. Always a pleasure, Jeanette. Uh, thank you for asking me.